He's good in the house tonight. He's worth giving our best passion for. We're talking about a passion for Jesus tonight. Stay tuned with us. Glad you're here. We're going to worship the Lord. For all our regulars out there, whoever's watching, David, Jamie, and so many others, we love you. And we're glad you can see some of us who are here. We're glad to be worshiping tonight. Let's bring our best to Jesus tonight as we get ready to sing. Enter in with thanksgiving. Holy. Come to you.
Savior. Is He your Lord? Yes. Is He your Savior tonight? We need to give Him glory and honor and praise. We need to worship the Lord all the day long. Glory to God. coming up ahead is, this, is you know, we're rolling into Memorial Day. It's not hard to believe, but it's true. And got some things coming up for the summer, so I'm going to try to go over this as methodically as I can. Uh, but we have this Friday uh, the ladies' Bible study. Sister Anita, if she's I was I set to lead that, I wish she traded last month, so she'll be here ready to go at 6.30, and so we encourage all the ladies that can be here for that, that are, and anybody that's it's not, we don't broadcast that out, but we do encourage you to pray for it. And God will do good things in, in, the, in our time. And everyone is certainly welcome. The following day, Saturday, uh, what is it, the 27th, I believe. Saturday the 27th, we have our holiday world trip. So we, we encourage, we said to meet this Saturday at 9 a.m. I'm probably going to put a message out to those that I know that are going, just making sure we've got enough drivers. We do have the bus going, but just making sure we got enough, even if there's above and beyond the bus. This seat's 15, so uh, we'll put out a message on that. But God, we'll, we'll have it all worked out. We'll get everybody up there, and we'll have a leaving for a good time. So, and appreciate you, as I told the group here, appreciate your prayers that we can, yes, be saved, but be a witness. All right. And as far as uh, what's coming up Sunday, I'll be sharing in the morning, or the ball will be sharing in the evening. And then Wednesday, we had talked, and then we mentioned this on Sunday. I would like to have a meeting about our revival uh, after the Sunday morning services. Briefly, it shouldn't take but a minute. I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page so we were kind of reminded those that are able to help and participate uh, with that. So we'll meet briefly after the Sunday morning services this time because we want everything to, to go good. What is that? The revival or the, no, meeting? the meeting? 
immediately after the Sunday morning services. Sunday. Yes. Because it's, it's a board or it's a church. It's just it's a church. Okay. It's any anybody that's interested in being or who, whosoever will <laughs> in this one. Uh, uh, so we encourage you to come out and give us. We have ideas that come from those meetings. So uh, the following Wednesday we talked about it, and it, it kind of depends. on I'm going to gauge interest again on Sunday, but instead of having service like this, meeting a little early, probably about six thirty or so, I have to be a little earlier. And then maybe doing a little outreach, doing a little outreach and passing out some flyers for revival. And so, you know, this is our normal Wednesday night group, and we might have some others. I'll probably gauge a little bit more interest on Sunday, but that's the plan at this time is to do that so we can promote the revival. And um, if, if somebody can't do that or is not able, um, they're certainly more, we'll probably meet here to pray before we go out. And one thing we used to do with outreach is just have people stay behind and pray too that's really where it's at. Prayer makes the difference. So yes. if you couldn't actually share out there, you could stay here and, and the prayer will make a difference for that too. But that's the plan at this point. So and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. So probably what we would do is just make sure nobody's covering the same territory and just head on out and go do it. So but we'll get with you more on that on Sunday. And uh, Friday through Sunday is our revival. June 2nd through 4th at 6.30 each night. And so I put out... Um, Bring some water, bottle of water, and uh, bring a desire for Jesus because we're going to believe for good. And, I, and so far, everything seems like it's it's going wrong, and we will work on that on, as we said on Sunday. And I think that covers everything up there. Yep. Praise the Lord. So that's a lot. If you have questions, that's what I'm here for. I'm trying to work through this, and we're going to have a, a great time and see what the Lord does. All right. We're going to dig into the Word tonight. Dig into the word. We're going to start in Romans, where I started a few moments ago. We've been covering on Wednesday nights a series on revival. What exactly that means, how exactly we can see that helped along in the church. We depend on him for it, but how can we actually facilitate that better? And, and we're probably winding that down as we come up to our revival, because that's uh, we're believing for good. And as we've said a series of meetings is not necessarily the revival we're talking about. We want to have that truly something going on in each of our hearts that God does something mm -hmm. great and we come together and see amazing things happen. <laughs> so we're believing for that. Right. And so we're talking about this. and This message tonight is on that passion. Stoke up that fire for Jesus. And it's a beautiful thing. I want to read this verse. So... It says here in Romans, Paul writing, not lacking in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. He's called us to that. Amen. And so it's good to have passion. It's good to have lots of, of good things uh, that we have passion for, but there's no passion like the passion for Jesus. Right. And you don't have to take my word for it. We're going to have somebody to help if she is willing tonight. Molly, I appreciate her. She's always a blessing Give a little bit of, so yeah so I just wanted to ask you as far as like and I didn't get a chance to, to brief you on this but we'll do this what if you had an activity to do like say for a day to be like your favorite thing to do inside outside whatever it is what would, what would one of those be something that you just enjoy doing uh -huh. <laughs> it could be anything You like, let's see, you like sports. Animals, the animals. Sure. Taking care of the animals? Okay. Okay, okay. Just like caring and, and spending time with your animals. Okay, yeah, yeah. I can see that. They're all they're all a lot of fun and uh, probably they're all a lot of trouble, aren't they? But they it's all good when you're spending time. So the thing is, we all have passion for different things, right? And we have. And if you were to spend a day with the animals in a good way, you're like, I know probably there's some difficult things. How would you how would you feel about that if we just said your or your mom and dad or whoever said, hey, we're gonna spend some time with the animals. We're gonna have an awesome time. How would you how would you react to that? <laughs> what would your reaction be to something like that? Would you be like Yes. yes. Sure. <laughs> we get to watch it. Yeah, can you give a demonstration of what it might be? Yeah, <laughs> thumbs up. Okay, thumbs that's up. a good one. Go. I love it. I love it. Okay, 
And that's the thing. Some of us express passion not only for different things, but in different ways. And that's, that's what we're talking about. The beautiful thing is, is that God knows our hearts, and he's looking for that heart to have that passion. If we had another kid here that was maybe a little bit more exuberant, I was going to maybe have a little, there's a little contrast. Sometimes you'll get a little contrast with people, won't you? But it's all the same when it's flowing from the heart. Amen? Mm -hmm. Can we hear it from Molly? Great job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Molly didn't know what I was doing, so <laughs> I, I appreciate her bravery for that and, and working with it. The point is, as we said, that there's differences in how we show uh, a passion for something. But if there is a passion for the Lord Jesus, God will, will know that and he will bless that. And that's what we want to see in our lives. That really is such a core part of that revival is having that heart for Jesus. And so if you define passion in the English, it's a strong desire for something, someone, or an idea. So I could I could give my I give some things I'm passionate about. One I've been talking about quite a bit is food. I do like lots of food and uh, <laughs> eating. And so I I you know yes. there's a difference in food and how I have a passion. I, I'm okay with Mexican food. I eat it a lot, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> but I really like Asian food. I have a passion for the Asian cuisine. That that's really where it comes down to. And so that's what I, I want to say. You can think about that. There's just sometimes. You like something, and there's a little bit beyond that we go. And so that, that's a human way of putting it. But I'm thankful that we don't have to just stay exactly, you know, in the same old, same old with, with where we have been. But God can take us further and deeper in that passion that if it's good in the worldly sense, how much awesome more is it when God gets in it? When the Lord Jesus comes in and ministers and gives us that fervent spirit that we just read about. Okay, I want to dig in here with us um, because it's critical that we have in Philippians chapter 3. This passion for Jesus is critical and brings great blessings when we have it. It brings blessings that, that just an ordinary way does not. So I, I encourage us here, we talked about some passions that we have. Uh, I encourage us, and the scriptures do, to check our passions. Where do our passions lie? Most people have a passion for something, but we sometimes have to check those. Check those. This is Paul, the apostle. He was writing about the various things that he had a passion for, if you will, in his former way before he became Christian. God say, though all, I also might have confidence in the flesh, Paul writes. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I'm more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee. Verse 6. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Concerning righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. Blameless. You see, I, I won't stop here. You can go on to the next verse, too, if you want to. So, he had everything right in what he was doing on the outside, but there was nothing on the inside. There was no passion there from the Lord going on. And that's what we want to, that's what revival really is about seeking, is that the outward things we do, we, we all know the stuff, many of us know the stuff, the things to do, the prayer, the Bible study, the church attendance, giving and serving up, all those things that we know to do, they can be done by actually, you know, an empty heart. How sad that is, and that's what Paul had going on here. All those things that were missing that. But what does he say here? But what things were gained to me, he says in verse 7, these I have counted loss for Christ. What a powerful thing to say, that all those other things that he had going for him, he was willing to let go for the Lord Jesus. And so I, I encourage us, Jesus is worth it all. You know, Amen. in the same way that we have, you know, sometimes when you have a passion for something, you got to forsake some others. You know, you think about marriage, right? Marriage is just what it is. You got to forsake all others, part of the Bible say. And that passion is is evident for us with the Lord Jesus. And I remind us of this too. And we'll talk about this as we go. Some passions yield more fruit than others. Amen. Some passions yield more fruit than others. Um, my favorite baseball team is up in Cincinnati, and I have a passion for them, and I have had a passion for a long time, but it 
has not yielded much fruit. They don't win. So it's just how it is. And so I say that earthly passions have their place, but they must have their place. They have to stay where they need to be. And if we're far, we can end up far from God with passions all over the place. But when we have a passion for Jesus, it's worth checking our other passions and see where our heart is. If anything is trying to choke out the Lord Jesus from our lives. Because when we count these a loss for Jesus, every, everything is gained for us. Everything when Jesus is our passion. Amen. So Lord, help us check our passions because uh, passions for things that get out of hand can quench revival. Because we all have those. We all have those and we've got to check them. All right. So if you could go on to verse 8 for us, please. So we're reminded to have a passion for Jesus and how precious this is. And yet, indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. <laughs> Another translation is probably a little more accurate calls it dumb. Totally waste, he says, compared with Jesus. How hard that is to think about, all those things. We like our things that we like, right? But we count them all as that. When, when it's in the light of Jesus, as that song said, they all become shadows. They do. It says here, uh, the knowledge of Christ Jesus. That word knowledge, sometimes we throw it around as just being, you know, I know about something. But this isn't knowledge like that. This is actually knowing someone. You actually have an in-depth knowledge. You have that, that passion uh, for them and they for you. It's, it's just a little bit deeper. It's by experience, in other words, instead of just hearing about something. Hopefully that makes sense. And it'll cause us to do things differently. It'll cause us to have a passion when we do that. And so it manifests itself in different ways. And we'll, we'll go into this in, in a practical sense. But I just want to stress to us, oh, that passion for Jesus when it comes from the inside, him working in us, it's, it's worth it. Because, you see, we it will express itself outwardly, right? But it has to be him and us working on the inside. It's inside out rather than outside in. Does, right. does that make sense? So the Lord has to be working on the inside with us. But it will express itself outwardly. You go to the next verse. So we do have different ways in revival. And so we try to make this kind of look at this practically here because it is. We do have reasons for the things we do in, in a Pentecostal church or in revival. So one of the things that you'll see folks do in church is we'll raise our hands, right? You raise your hands. Lamentations 341. I don't recall ever actually teaching this verse or having this verse, but it's a good verse. Let us lift our hearts and hands to God in heaven. I love that. I love that in the midst of Jeremiah's sorrow, he's saying here, hey, I'm not only going to just lift my hand, but my heart yes. to the Lord Jesus. Amen. Lift it all to him. It's beautiful stuff. And Amen. so we do lift our hands to the Lord. And it's that symbol of, hey, here, Lord, here I am, Lord. I give it all to you. Right. And it's a beautiful thing to do. And so that's what we do. It's good to be, have that expression to lift up our hands, lift up both hands. I remember I had, there was a children's pastor talking to the kids and, and she was saying, you know, sometimes you have one hand that gets hard. Gets, gets hard. And as a kid, I used to think, yeah, I'm a little less holy if I can't get this hand up. But yeah, it's okay. You can put your hand down and raise the other one up. You, you kind of have to alternate them around. We know how it is, you know, uh, with that. And, and you, I used to think it is a little bit unusual holding up hands like that. But it's an awesome symbol of, of what God really wants to do and what we have the privilege of doing, giving ourselves to him and our hearts to him. So it's always an awesome thing to lift up our hands. And Lord, help us not to be embarrassed. Sometimes we do get embarrassed to stand out. But Lord, help us. Because when it's between you and him, we can go, we, we will realize, in the con there are some things we look at, but in the context, it's good to go after Jesus. Say that. Amen. Amen. It's good to go after him. So let me mention some other things for uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 4. So that passion will express itself outwardly and then inside out. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Remember, it's that, it's that same Lord. It's, it's from the inside, the Holy Ghost. It's coming inside us, but we will have diversities of gifts. It's good to see spiritual gifts in our Bible and a service. It's good to see those. And we don't, I wish we had more. We could probably talk for a good while about what those spiritual gifts are. But it's good to have words of wisdom and knowledge and prophecy and tongues and interpretations 
and uh, discernment. All those things need to be present in revival. And as the Lord, we believe, will move in this church, we believe that that passion for Jesus is going to exude itself in different folks, different ways, and it's going to come out uh, in a blessing to everybody else. So if you got a gift, if the Lord's ministering with you, we, it's good to use it. Amen? It's good to use your gifts because it's, it's a beautiful, in a, in a service. Now, they can be used out of the service. We're talking specifically as a practical point for an actual revival service. They know we want to see those gifts. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. And not only gifts to the out uh, for the church uh, to minister to them, but this is talking a little bit about something different. For he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. 1 Corinthians 14 touches on what we would call with speaking in tongues a prayer language. It's not meant for the edification of the church, the building up of the church. It's meant for the actual building up of the individual. And so there you will have times, and it's, it's sometimes it's a little odd maybe for folks to come in and they're standing beside somebody who's speaking in tongues. It's a little, it's quiet. It doesn't project out into the church because it's not supposed to. It's been, we, we can read that verse as well, but we're speaking between ourselves and God. And for those that have that prayer language, it's a good thing to have in revival. It, 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 it allows that passion to flow through in, in um, that Amen. prayer language to him. That it's through, again, I have this verse here because it's through the Holy Ghost. This isn't something that, had, that just says, well, I just want to speak in tongues, tongues now. No, it's something that comes because that passion for Jesus comes right. out. And I want to talk to him That's in a language that, that I just let, go, let my tongue go and just start uttering all kinds of praise mm -hmm. to God. That's what it is. So you're speaking mysteries to God that are praise. And so that prayer language is precious. And so, and again, there's a lot of teaching that could go with that more than I'm doing tonight. But in revival, it's good to have that prayer language. I believe it encourages the service. And then also Exodus 33.10, the posture that we have sometimes will change. And again, with some of these, there's not a possibility to do it for various reasons. But as the Lord help, you know, may the Lord help us with that. Um, and then I'll talk about this in a second. But when Moses was going in and meeting with God, at the, at the tabernacle when the glory of God came down. This is what it says all the people did. All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose, stood up, and worshipped, each man in his tent door. So they stood up there. They weren't sitting. They stood up, and they said, I'm going to worship God. I'm going to go after God because he's, he's in the house. He's showing up here, and I'm going to bless him and stand up and do that. And we have other verses that... They do that too. And so I, as a kid, you see in revival services, sometimes a lot of standing. And so you're kind of standing there. Ooh, I'm standing a long time. This is a long time to stand. Has anybody ever been there? Let's be honest. Ooh, I'm standing a long time. When are they going to stop? It says, a kid, that's just, that's just how you think, right? And so, it, but why do we stand? This is it. It's showing, it's showing a reverence for God and a respect and sometimes a, a readiness to worship that maybe is a little easier than, than from the sitting position. That said, you can't always stand for various reasons, and it doesn't necessarily make make it more holy uh, if you can. But the, the idea is, is that's why we do that, and if we have the ability to, then we, we give God praise that way. Or if we kneel down, I had verses on that, but I won't go into that. The posture that we have sometimes is it can be an expression of that passion that we have. Does that make sense? And so that's why we do some things that we do. And, and the thing is, I had to realize in my own testimony that if you're just standing there to stand there, it is pretty hard. But when you have a little bit more of that passion, just a little bit more, it makes it a whole lot easier. Amen? It does. Mm -hmm. If you have that love for God, see, you're able to do those things that are maybe a little bit harder physically. Um, and how did I word it here? Um, not, and we, we do it, uh, and it helps us with the physical challenges. Or maybe if it's a little bit unusual. You know, spiritual gifts can be a little bit unusual, right? But it helps us with that because we have that passion for him. God's um, working in the revival. And so Lord, help us to have that passion, not just because others do, or just because we're trying to get something. All of these things may be happening, but it's coming from the inside out, the passion for Jesus. All right. And so we will have results. Our last verse for us tonight is verse 9, Philippians 3. There are results when we pursue Jesus with a passion. 
And it says, and be found in him. We will be found in Jesus. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. By faith. The real blessing in all this is not just what we do, because that will come. And I'll talk a little bit more about some other things we do. It's finding him by faith and having that blessed assurance of who we are and whose we are because we have that right standing with God. There, there is no awesome, you know, there's awesome blessings in having God come down in a service. There's awesome blessings. There's some things I'm going to talk about in a minute that, get, that we can have a passion for too. But there is nothing like having the assurance that, hey, God's with me and I'm with him. And it's not going to be changing. And then I, you know, I'm going to just keep on going. Yeah, it's some hard times. I'm going to keep on going until I go all the way up and be with him forever, right? And that, there's no assurance like having that assurance right. that he's got you. Maybe. Does that make sense? Yeah. He's got you. You got him. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It's a beautiful thing. And that's what he's saying here. It's not about what I do, even though I'm going to do things. It's about what he's done on the cross and in me. And I'm thankful for that tonight. And that's what we have. That's what we have to do. It's not just about doing stuff, but knowing him. Amen. So I hope that makes sense. Passion will have, passion will show out. There's going to be fruit, if you will. But, oh, Lord, help us to remember how beautiful it is, those things that he gives us, that, that peace and assurance, and just knowing him, who he is. All right. And then there will be more results that come, that come outside the, the building. God has results of passion that come, and we talked about some of that, but um, we definitely will see a, a changed attitude toward folks. Love, a greater love that, that the Lord helps us to grow in. Um, he'll help us with um, ministry and giving to folks. And I, I put a word down, I don't want to use that particular word, but sometimes folks will get passionate about causes, right? A bit, um, good causes, if you will. Like we got, we got one here called the um, oh, working with pregnant ladies and, and mm -hmm. making sure they're able to have the baby's life choice, I think is what they call it. You know, having a passion for ministry like that and, and just being able, and Brother Bob was talking about some of his missionary friends being able to minister and going overseas and having that passion. Yeah. And so it will take us outside the church doors. It sure will. And revival does is not intended just to stay in a service. The passion is not just intended That's to right. stay there. It's intended to go out from the doors just to others. And so, but I, I said that to say this, it's not something that we, we start with. We start with it here in our hearts right. and, and in those times with him, the seeking him. And in those times that we come together seeking him, and then it just builds us up to where we are able, as it says in Acts 4, to go out and speak the word of God boldly, boldly. All right, so let's wind this down here for us here. Let's keep seeking after him. Let's keep seeking him and his very best with our very best that he gives us in our hearts. Sometimes it means going after him just a little bit longer or in a little, just a little bit different way. But it's, it's, it's hard sometimes. We admit that it is. And so I mentioned about passion. You know, a lot of times people have passion for sports teams, if you will. I mentioned a case of that already. Um, and I'll, I'll rag my brother a little bit if he were watching we, we say there's teams that sometimes that lose, and you know one of them says the Titans, right, the football mm -hmm. team, they lose. And you, the thing is, if you're really a fan of them, you support them whether they win or lose, right? If they're going through the loss, right. you got to support them. The Chicago Cubs, the baseball team, have been like that. You support them when they lose. You cheer for them even when things are rough. That's what passion is. And so how much more can we, through the power of Jesus working in us, have a passion that doesn't go anywhere? Amen, because remind us of this. When we know Christ, the Bible promises this, this. We are guaranteed to find him when we seek him. Right. Seek and you shall find, and not maybe. We will find him. Amen? Right. So sometimes it's hard, but we're, we, we have that passion. We can do it. Maybe even the titles will win. <laughs> God, God help us to have passion. God help us to have a passion for him. I do want to pray for us because as we said it's not from the outside in that we can do good things Paul did good things but it wasn't dead it was dead on the inside he's called us to have it changed on the inside when Paul was changed on the inside then all those things 
Ooh, they got but they got awesome. He wants to do that for us too. If anybody's not right with the Lord Jesus that's watching this, whenever you're watching this, it's a good time to make it right. And for any of us, if we struggle with that passion, because we all do sometimes, we want to pray, Lord, just stoke up that fire in us. Father God, I do want to pray in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus, give us a greater hunger for you. And Lord, and we're having some revival services come up. We're believing good things for that. But we don't want to wait till then. We pray that even now, where we are, you stuck up the passion in us. Stuck up a fire in us that, Lord, though it may have some difficult times, the Lord, you're going to keep it going. And then, Lord, you will give us a passion to do those things you've called us to do as well. But I want to pray, Father, for anyone that needs to make it right with you. That if anyone needs to have that fire restored, or maybe they've never felt it at all, Lord, we pray and believe tonight that we can know you in the same way that Paul did. pray, Father, for anyone that needs to confess you and confess their sins, that they will and be saved. Be assured deep down where they're going when they die. Father, thank you, Lord, for everyone that's listening to, because there's a call in their lives. And I believe you enable us through that, that saving grace. You enable us to fulfill that call and powerfully minister to someone that needs Jesus. And I just pray that you stoke up that fire in us. Give us that burden maybe to seek you just a little bit longer, maybe a little bit differently, to, to be obedient to you, to be, to be willing, dear God, also to step into that calling, that whether it's, it's sharing with someone or teaching those that are, that are younger than us or to... To just be a lover of souls, dear God. Give us that passion and that fire, Lord. But it's not just something we're doing because we're told to. But Lord, we love you, we love you, and we want to do it deeper. I pray that blessing on this congregation and those watching in Jesus' name. That that passion will be stoked up like never before. That you will be glorified in lives. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And we believe for the good, Lord. Good testimony. Yes, when the revival comes, dear God, the services that we're planning, we ask, dear Lord, that you have liberty and have your way. We glorify you for it. Oh, every speaker, every song. No, oh, the, not just them, but in this church, dear Lord, that it'll be for your glory. May we bless you and praise you, Jesus. Can you cycle?
things on the internet. We'll go ahead and stop now. But I just want to say we love you. And we all, we believe the Lord gives us passion for everyone else too. And we just pray God's blessings for you. And if you need to let us know something, please do. We'll see you soon here at Christian Life.